Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series Baroness. Now, the interesting thing about this is I wanted to call it the Retro Series because I call the Hasbro Marvel Legends that come on a card like this the Retro Carded figures. But they have a retro series for G.I. Joe, which are the three and three quarter inch figures. So I can't do that. So this is just the carded series of classified, but it doesn't say classified. So it's kind of confusing, but it's listed at Walmart as a classified series. So that's what I'm going with. So to go on with that, uh, this was sent to me by Hasbro. They sent me a Yo Joe like gift pack sort of thing with a bunch of these six inch figures to review and a couple other things. Uh, I don't have to review them by the way. They send them and they say we'd like it if you reviewed them, but you don't have to. And so I am because that's what I do, but obviously I'm not going to say anything different because they sent them to me. I never do, no matter who's sending me stuff, whether it's NECA or Bandai or anything like that. I never, ever, ever change what I'm going to say based on whether or not I'm getting stuff for free. And like I said, I don't even have to review them. I could have just kept them or sold them or done whatever I wanted with them, but I'm going to review them. So let's go ahead and get the figure off the stand and take a closer look. This figure stands just shy of 16 centimeters, which is gonna make it pretty close to, and we'll say six and a quarter inches. It's just shy of that as well. Now, before we get into the rest of the review, let's do a quick question of the day. You don't have to be an 80s kid to answer this. I was born in 87, so I'm technically an 80s kid, but I grew up in the 90s, all right? Like, I wasn't doing much cartoon watching up till three years old. But this is the question. Which 80s IP, 80s cartoon, or whatever you wanna pick, was your favorite? Like He-Man, G.I. Joe, Transformers, that kind of thing. Now, I didn't get into any of this stuff until later on, so I'm not into the original 80s stuff. But I'm going to go with Transformers because I just never really got into Joe that much. Did watch it as a kid, but not too much. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the aesthetic on the figure. The first thing I want to note, and hopefully it's obvious to you guys, it does have different finishes. We have the glossy black and then the satin to matte black, and it looks so much better than just a solid poorly made figure that's just shiny everywhere. I don't mind all matte everywhere, but this is definitely the way to do it. Let's look at the arms real quick. And it's not just the whole chunks of the arm either. This is all satin down here and then the outer part, the armor piece is glossy. Her chest plate, glossy, shoulder pads, glossy. The boots, it's very nicely done. Very, very nicely done. I'm very pleased with that. Not a ton of paint on the figure otherwise. She does wear all black, but you do even get it down here on the belt. The Cobra logo is glossy. The Cobra logo on the chest is painted pretty dang well. It's not absolutely perfect, but I'll tell you what, I keep getting comments in my uh, Marvel Legends reviews saying how much better the Classified series is than Marvel Legends, and I'm like, okay, but I don't really care about G.I. Joe that much, so I don't plan to buy that many. But the people are pretty much right. <laughs> uh, the ones I've looked at so far, I mean, I have reviewed a few, but and I get the whole licensing issue and cost and everything, but ultimately what matters as, to us as consumers is what are we getting for our money? I don't really care why things cost what they cost as long as I'm getting, it, getting what I pay for. Like, yeah, a Ferrari costs a lot, but you get what you pay for. Or a Chevy Malibu doesn't, but you get what you pay for, that kind of thing. Uh, if a Marvel Legends figure is going to cost $26, it should feel like I'm getting my money's worth. They usually don't. These figures seem to so far. We're going to go through it and see how good it actually turns out to be. This one's a fairly basic one, but still, so far I'm pretty pleased. All right, so let's continue with the aesthetic. Let's just look at the sculpt work. Detailed work through all of the undersuit. It's kind of like a hex pattern, sort of. More like a basketball pattern, I guess. And then, of course, the armor plate is smooth and glossy. But yeah, there's nice detail work throughout. Very pleased with that. The hair is just very straight and cut off at the back, but I'm guessing that's not just bad sculpt work that it's supposed to be that way. Like I said, I'm not the biggest G.I. Joe fan, which probably some people would say means I shouldn't review the figures, but I'm not reviewing the IP. I'm reviewing the figure itself, so it doesn't really matter what it's made to look like. It matters how it's made. So it makes me even better suited to review it in my estimation. But yeah, very nice detail work all the way throughout. Very, very pleased with that. The face looks pretty good. The glasses come separate in the package. You have to slide them on and she has cutouts in her face to make them fit. So you would never take them off. In fact, here, I'll show you. <laughs> I will take them off, but you never want to do that probably if I can get them off. There we go. So yeah, you don't want to do that. She looks a little bit like uh, Robocop there, 
So the eyes are painted pretty well. They definitely have like an anime sort of vibe to them. The lips have some gloss paint on them. I'm guessing that little white bit in there is not meant to look like teeth. I think it's supposed to be glare, but it's high enough up that it looks like teeth and I don't like that. It looks pretty weird. There's a little bit of blush on the face also at the bottom of the cheeks. Kind of a cool idea. I do think her cheekbones are a little narrow. It throws off the uh, attractiveness. She's supposed to be super attractive, right? This character, it's good enough. And the glasses are made nicely. Mine could use a little bit more paint at the bottom right there. But yeah, it's a, it's fine. It's a good enough head sculpt. It's not great, good enough. I do think the glasses gimmick, if you want to call it that, is very nicely done. Very, very pleased with that. So yeah, it's not like, this thing isn't blowing me away because it's mostly a solid black figure, but what is here, what is done, is done very nicely and I'm very pleased with that. So I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. There's not a whole lot more they could have done and there's nothing going on that really bothers me. The face could look a little bit better, but for the aesthetic, it's pretty good. Maybe some shading in the hair, but yeah, the two-tone, I like it. I like it a whole bunch. All right, now as far as accessories go, we don't get any alternate hands, so that bothers me a little bit. We only have the very triggery fingers. So that kind of blows. But we do get some pistols, which are nice enough. She can hold them pretty well, and they do fit in the holsters on her back, or on her back of her belt. We do get two different rifles, also a really long snipery type rifle, and then one that looks kind of like a shotgun, laser gun rifle thing. I don't know what it is. Uh, she holds them well enough also in her hands, but they do have these giant fixed pegs on them, and she can't even peg them into her back because of her hair, so. I hate that and I hate none of the accessories are painted, so that kind of blows. Definitely you could put, cut those pegs off and I would recommend it, but as they are, they're not great. And then lastly, we do get a little uh, Cobra display stand, which is kind of cool because it's in a glossy finish. I think it would be better to be in a matte finish with some paint on there, but hey, you do get it and it's nicer than the Marvel Legends 20th anniversary ones. So I'll give it that, but not having any paint on the accessories and the pegs on the weapons, not thrilled with that. I'll go, Seven, it's fine, seven out of 10, no alternate hands, no paint. It's not bad, at least we got accessories, but it's not great. Now, as far as the articulation goes, these figures are definitely a step above what we see from Hasbro on their other stuff, usually. So, I don't know if I wanna pop the head off, I'm not gonna bother, but we have ball pegs in the neck all the way around, so you can lean the head in any direction you want. You do get your full rotation, not counting where the hair is limiting it. She can't look up too far because of the hair also, but you can look down, she can look to the side, lean to the side, lean this way, and look down. Like the double ball pegs and ball pegs throughout the neck and head region, definitely the way to go, 100%. In fact, I'm kind of bummed out that I keep telling all these companies how to fix their products um, without getting paid for it. But hey, it's working. We got good necks, finally. Uh, we have a little bit of a butterfly going on in here. It's not a ton, but it is there, so it doesn't hurt. That's okay. You do get your full rotation out of the shoulder. The shoulder pad is connected to the shoulder, so that's fine. It's on a little soft piece that moves around so it doesn't get in the way too much. No bicep swivel, so that is definitely not great. Raising the shoulder up works nicely. It goes all the way out to the side, no problem. You get your single jointed elbow with a little bit of force you get it to 90 degrees. Not great, definitely should be a double jointed elbow. You do get your bicep swivel out of that. Again, not great. I thought we were done with the single jointed elbows, but apparently we are not. Now another thing I'm very bummed out about, but also ecstatic about, not really ecstatic, that's a bit much. We have the vertical hinges for the trigger finger hands, which is something I've been campaigning for, for years now. And now we finally have them both hands, have the appropriate hinges for her to hold her guns nicely. And I like that very much. So that's cool. Up here we have a diaphragm joint, which has really solid range. Look at that sideways lean. I've been campaigning for this also for a long time. At least a single ball peg or a double ball peg in here to get the proper range. Side to side is great. Leaning all the way back is great. Look at that, no weird gaps so far. Works wonderfully if you do it right. Leaning forward not as far, but enough and still no gapping. So that's very nice. And then down here we have another ball peg. So you mix those two ball pegs and she can lean really far back. That's great. And she can lean pretty far forward. Definitely could get more out of that if they tried a little harder, but it's not bad. And then leaning to the side is really good. Of course, you get your rotation throughout. Very nice torso setup. Ball pegs are the way to go for the torso. Basically straight from, from the belly button, or even a little bit lower probably, from the peeper all the way up through the head. Ball pegs, straight through. Best way to do it, and this works well. 
The floaty belt hides the gapping in her torso where you have the gap between the crotch and the belly, so that's fine. The hips go all the way out to the side. Nicely, we do have hinged ball pegs in here, so that's not gonna help going out to the side. It doesn't do that, that's not the purpose. The purpose of that is to help the legs go forward. Now, uh, the debate is whether or not hinged ball pegs are any good, and technically they can be, but they really don't need to be there because if you engineer the hip properly, you don't need that extra hinge, which does lead to this weird pinched in look in the hips. I mean, obviously not when they're up, but when they're down, it brings the legs in. So even when you do bring them down and then raise them up, you have to use the thigh swivel to make it work and it doesn't give you that much extra range. So she can kick pretty high, but I don't know if it's worth it. That's up to you guys really. The kick works nicely. I still would rather not have the hinged ball peg in there and then just let the leg go up like this. That's fine with me because the hinged ball pegs, they become a hassle to pose a lot of the time because when you move one, the other one tends to want to move and they often get in the way and are kind of finicky. This one is executed pretty well. Uh, I think the original Snake Eyes had some problems with his. Hers are good, so it's fine. It doesn't really need to be there, but it does work on this figure, so that's okay. The legs don't go back at all. You do get a thigh swivel that is fine. Double jointed knee. I'd like to see a little bit more range out of that. There's more room there, but we can't do it. So that's a little bit of a bummer. And then for the ankle, it goes all the way back. And uh oh, does it not go forward? Oh no, I hate it when they don't go forward. Nope, seems like I can't get it to go forward. So very, very little range going forward. That's definitely a bummer. Ankle rocker is at a pretty steep angle too. Not great ankles. Overall, it's not a bad batch of articulation. Some things are really good. Neck and torso, great. Shoulders, okay. Elbow, not great. No bicep swivel. Hips, pretty good. Ankles, bad. I'm going to go seven. It's nothing great here. There's some great, but I shouldn't say it's nothing great. Overall, it's not. Some things are great. Some things are bad. So averages out to a seven. Okay, time for a final verdict on this release. If you are a Marvel Legends collector, I urge you to pick a G.I. Joe figure that you like. Try it out, get one and see if you like it because it'll let you know what you're missing out on. Like I don't really care about Joe figures, but just opening these figures, I was having more fun than I do with the Marvel Legends and I grew up on Marvel. So it's definitely a different experience. I know what you guys are talking about when you keep commenting about, oh, wanted to point this out too. Her arms don't go down. That's super irritating for me. I hate it when I have to do an A pose for everybody because they can't bring their arms down. So that is a problem. It's mostly because of the armor, but they could have just cut some of that out, I think. Anyway, yeah, this was a much more fun experience for me, probably for you guys too to watch the video about a figure where there's a lot more good stuff than bad stuff. But yeah, it's a fine release. I'm very pleased with it. I think if you like the character, you're gonna like the figure plenty. You won't be disappointed other than by a few tiny things and they're, they're tiny, so it's not too bad. So I'm gonna give this figure a final rating of, uh, I'm gonna go eight out of 10. We definitely do have some limitations that I don't care for. The ankles being the biggest one because that affects posing a lot, uh, but it's, it's pretty darn good. I think you guys are going to like it. So uh, there it is. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to leave a comment, please do. I will pin somebody's comment if it's insightful or funny or something like that. I will pin it. And you get a little bit of notoriety that way. You can show off to all your friends that you got your comment pinned. I know that's not really a thing. I'm just joking. But I am going to do it. So do that if you want to. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you probably should. I have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.